Today we're going to be looking at Raymond Weil versus Theron. Yes, Theron is Charlize Theron, the famous movie actress. And the concept that we are concerned with when looking at this case is really the concept of cure. How to cure a potentially serious breach. The, the idea is some contracts have within them a cure provision that allows the breaching party, who may someday become a defendant, to cure the breach. In other words, to take care of the matter so that it's not going to be a breach anymore. If it's the type of breach that is an ongoing thing that can be cured. This case is a fine example of it. Uh, Theron agreed with uh, Raymond Weil, watchmakers, that she would promote their product for a little over a year for three million dollars. And for that three million dollars she promised in writing uh, not to wear publicly any other watches other than the ones that uh, Raymond Weil uh, provided. And uh, she should not also endorse or advertise watches or jewelry for any other uh, company. She could wear jewelry, of course, to award shows and in public that was manufactured by other people. But watches? No, just jewelry. So anyway, uh, during the one year plus term, she agreed with Mont Blanc. Uh, you may know them because they sell pens, but they also sell uh, jewelry and other items. So she agreed with Mont Blanc that she would advertise for them. And she allowed her photograph to be taken with uh, some Mont Blanc jewelry draped over her arm. Mont Blanc turned that into a promotional poster that was 14 feet high, and they used that poster at an international trade show. They didn't put it out front, they only used it in their booth, requiring somebody to actually come in and be interested in your product in order to see it. Well, that of course is a breach of contract. And looking back at the cure provision, she, uh, she had the right to cure that. When notified by the uh, plaintiff in this case, Raymond Weil, that she was in breach of contract or breaching the contract, she, uh, by prevailing upon Mont Blanc to get rid of that poster, was able to cure the problem within five days. Now, the actual agreement for curing Red, and I'll skip some words just to get to the heart of it. No party shall have the right to sue for a breach of this agreement until it gives written notice uh, in a period of five days to cure the breach and such period elapses without cure. In other words, had she not cured it, that would be a different story, but she cured it. So, in order to have the right to sue for breach of contract, it has to go beyond the five days. But she made it under the wire. And the court, the district court, incidentally, this is a trial court case, summary judgment, so it's not an appellate case. So uh, <coughs> the court rules, yes, that was a breach. However, because she was able to cure it within five days, um, the claim for breach of contract must be dismissed. The point of drafting the cure provision in that contract, and most contracts where it appears, is to give the party a right to take care of it so it's going to be no breach, or at worst a minor breach, depending upon the language of the contract. So here it found that uh, the uh, claim for breach of contract on this score must be dismissed. Now, she had another problem too, and that was uh, she had a, a press conference. She was wearing 
a Christian Dior watch to the press conference. Of course, photographs were taken at the press conference, and of course they were used, and in particular, uh, one set of photographs was used on the internet, another found its way to a uh, Tourneau publisher, no, yeah, the publisher, and it's, it publishes the Torno Times, mailed to about 100,000 high-spending Torno customers. In other words, it got out there. It was quite public, and she was, I guess inadvertently, you could say, advertising for the, uh, the other uh, Christian Dior organization. That one... The cure provision was irrelevant because the court held that the breach of the contract was participating uh, in the in the uh, Dior wearing the Dior watch at the film festival. She breached her covenant not to wear publicly any other watches other than the wild watches. She said it was regrettable, sorry I did it, and so on. And it was only a short time, it was less than an hour, I believe. But the court holds that a breach, no matter uh, how, uh, how fleeting it may be, the results in use of Theron's image in connection with another manufacturer's watch cannot be deemed in immaterial. Therefore, the breach was wearing the watch. She had no control over subsequent usage of the photographs that, come on, she knew would be taken there. She knew would be used in some way. She didn't think of it as a breach of contract, perhaps, but it turned out to be. So, uh, the motion for partial summary judgment on the part of Raymond Weil is granted the defendant's motion for summary judgment on the claim that uh, the issue of actual breach is denied. Because remember, both were breaches. One was cured, the other was not cured. 